Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre-recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So uh, honestly what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here right there. Uh, anyway, all right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread. And I'd love to, again, see what you're up to. And I'll try and answer your questions as we get going. But let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. One last thing I was going to mention too, because I don't know how much time I'm going to need to turn all this on. Maybe it's ready to go and you know, the real me, the live me can just, just cut this off and we can get to it. But in case I need a little bit more time, let me just tell you about myself. So my name is Derek Mitchell. We've been over that. Also, uh, I live in Montana, in Kalispell, Montana, actually, which is just outside of Glacier National Park. And I've got four daughters and a wife, and we have tons of fun doing outdoor things like riding bicycles. We float the river on our paddle boards. That's a ton of fun. I love to downhill mountain bike. That's a ton of fun. When it snows for like nine months out of the year, we like to go snowboarding and skiing. So uh, I feel like I'm rambling. So at any point, Derek, just go ahead and just you know, let's do this. Let's get live. Let's start teaching. What is going on, Miles? My dog just came to say hello. Hi, Miles. Let's say hello to the people. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. This is Miles, my poodle. We're working on his mohawk. Oh, thanks. Kisses. Oh.
What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Got some fun stuff today. It's going to be a little short. Trying some new things. Don't forget to uh, post in the chat where you're watching from, what you're up to, which reminds me. Hey, guys, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, I got to pull up the chat window so I can actually see you guys in the chat. I thought I had it pulled up, but it's not loading. So there we go. So close. Almost got it. There we go. <clears throat> cool. So uh, I'm broadcasting from my brand new office. I just got another new office. And I know another new office. Uh, I've been streaming from my house for a lot of these streams and um, been moving around, trying different locations. And now I'm in a new spot and trying some different things. And I can't wait to show you guys. I don't have it set up for today's stream, but it's coming in the very near future. So uh, if you want to see some of the behind the scenes content, check the subscribe area below this feed on Behance. And uh, you can join and see some of the things that I'm working on behind the scenes. So I've uh, got some 8-bit music vibes, compliments of stream beats. I'm digging it. It's taking me back to my Nintendo days when I was a kid playing Super Mario Brothers and all that good stuff. All right, so what I wanna to do today, um, I wanna to experiment with some colors and show you guys how I work and build new colors uh, when I'm working on a new project. Also, I just realized, uh, usually I use a green screen, so I get all nice and cut out, but I don't have a green screen. This is actually behind me. It's really, really back there. Um, so the video takes up a lot more space. Okay, we'll have to fix that. <clears throat> we'll fix it. But for now, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So uh, lots of ways to do this. And what I want to show you is how I come up with different colors, some different color tools that we have within Illustrator and Photoshop and on mobile devices and lots of cool things. So if I'm building color palettes, I typically start in Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is in Illustrator, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. And it doesn't really matter what you're doing, although this width, 149 inches, this this was for something totally different. We'll come back to that later. I'm just gonna jump over to this web tab up here at the top, and we're just gonna choose the most common size. Again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off my camera so you can see the whole screen. I'll click Create. All right. I have to sneeze. <laughs> oh, not happening. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, make some squares on my canvas. So if I'm going to start with a color and I already know what I want to do, I'm going to the letter M to get my rectangle tool, click and drag, and you can make any size you want. You could do long skinny swatches or hold on shift and make squares, whatever you want to do and uh, fill it with color. So what I might do before I fill it with color, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the option key, click and drag over, and then let go. And now if I hit Command D, I can duplicate that step and repeat and make copies of this. All right, so here's some squares we can make some colors in. Let's do some this way as well. So click on that once. Let's just resize this a little bit. Hold down the option key, click and drag a copy and hit Command D to step and repeat a couple times. So we've got a few different colors that we can work with here. And I really enjoy looking at Behance for ideas. So we go to Behance.net and you can scroll down and see all kinds of cool stuff. And maybe, maybe you're looking, oh, this is actually really cool right here. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command, Shift, and the number four to make a screen shot. Uh, so I get the little crosshairs and I can click and drag and then before I let go, I'm going to hold down the control key. So I'll hold down the control key, then let go of the mouse. And then I'll switch back here so we can see what we're doing. Um, and it copies it to your clipboard instead of to your, da uh, to your desktop. So now I can hit command V to paste that. Paste it right in on my canvas here. Okay, so now there's a few things. There's, there's a lot of things we could do really. But this is, this is my first... This is, this is how I create colors and my first approach with this kind of stuff. So I'll get the eyedropper tool and I'll just sample this color, click on it and it loads the foreground with it. Now if I hold down the option key and then click, it'll fill it in. So now I can let go of the option key and it goes back to a, an eyedrop sampler. 
So I can click again to reload with a different color. Hold down Option and then paste the color. And I just kind of go back and forth like this until I'm happy with the swatches or the colors. So there's some colors and maybe I'll add another color in here. Get my eyedropper tool again. Let's sample this color and then throw it over here. And uh, maybe you want to rearrange these. So I'll drag a copy down. And by rearrange, I mean, I kind of want these flipped. So I'm just going to, let's see, copy this color, paste it here, copy this color, option click to paste it there. There we go. Boom, now I've got a color swatch. So that's one way to work. What else could we do with this thing? Let's go ahead and fill these colors over here while we're at it. Boom, okay. So now we've sampled colors from here. Uh, there's a lot of other ways to do it. And let me see, um, I actually had a glitch. I was trying to get this up before before I went live. So we'll, we'll see if this, if this works for me. Give me just a second here. I'm gonna hook up my iPad so you guys can see what I see. Oh, I forgot, that's the wrong one. Just kidding, we're not gonna do the iPad thing today. All right, well. Sorry, I moved all of my gear and now I'm realizing that I don't think I have my cable that I need for this quickly handy. Let me think about that for two seconds. Oh, there might be one over here. Hold, hold that thought. All right, I'm back. So I <laughs> was trying to plug in an iPhone connector instead of a USB-C. That's why it wasn't working out. It's so good for me. All right, let's try this again. So what we're gonna do, hopefully, is tether this so you guys can see Adobe Capture. All right, so I'm using an app called Adobe Capture. Uh, super cool. Uh, lots of really cool things. So what I'm gonna do is I can find anything I like, whether it's actually here, if I change the screen, let me see if this works out for us. This might not work out for us. Let's change, let's go back to Ecamm Live. Let's go to this scene and let's change the camera to the wrong one <laughs> sure it's not loading all right there it is for some reason it's not letting me set it up Strange. Okay. Um, I'll try flipping the cable around. Sometimes it works. I'll try plugging it in over here. There we go, finally. All right, so now you can see better what we're doing. All right, so sorry for the delay on that, guys. Oh, but while it's open, you guys can see, if I turn it sideways. So here's the beginnings of our new office space. We got a lot of space to work from. So 
So anyway, a work in progress. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to the original here. Oh, that was weird. Sorry, we had a filter on. Now we can probably see things a little bit easier. My wife's desk will go over there. Got a kitchen area over there. Got an elevator, because we're up on the second level. Anyway, it'll be cool. So let's just pretend like I want to use these uh, buttons on my Stream Deck here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and tap the screen. Well, let's try it one more time. I'll hold real still, tap it, and that'll freeze it. And then what I can do is actually drag these colors to be exactly where I want them to be on these little endpoints here. So we could do it that way. That's one way to work. And then you'll see on the left-hand side, we've got a gradient. And uh, we can also change some different settings on this right-hand side. So down the side here, I've got different effects we can apply to this, whether it's hue. You can see how it changes the colors of everything here, or highlight, or brightness. Turn those off. We'll go back to the original. All right, so I can play with, right now down the side, we're using, again, the Adobe Capture app. So we're, we're using the Colors tab down here. And I could do shapes or type or different things like that, but right now we're just gonna work with the colors. And now uh, that I've got this set, I'm gonna go ahead and click the little checkbox over here. All right, and then I can adjust all the different color sources here, or I can just go ahead and save it if I want to. So one new feature is I can actually pinch in or out on the gradient to adjust the number of colors. So right now I think I've got three colors, but as I pinch in and out, it's adding more to it, although it kind of messed up. Let me go back. This card changes. All right, let's try this again. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and save it just like this. Gradient one, let's just call this, let's just call it Stream Deck, because that's what I got it from. All right, and then I can choose where to save this. So if I save it to right here, I can choose which Creative Cloud library. So if I hit this, you can see I have a ton of libraries. These are different client libraries that I use. So you can make a new one, clicking the little plus sign up on the top right. Or in this case, I'm gonna add it to a pre-existing library that I already have, and I'll click Save. All right, so then let me just check this real quick. Cool. So it saved it. And now I've got uh, this new color library within my Derek Mitchell library. So now what I should be able to do, if I jump over to, let's switch this here. I'm gonna go ahead and close the iPad lid for a second. Put this away. All right. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into my libraries. And I forget, okay, so here's my libraries window. I'm in Illustrator. So if you don't see the libraries window, come over here to window, come down to libraries, and then I gotta navigate back to the library that I just saved this in, which was my Derek Mitchell library. And if I click on that, we should see the colors populate, but I'm not seeing them right now. And maybe I didn't save it, or maybe I closed my iPad before it was done syncing. So let's check that real quick and make sure. All right. So I see it here. And I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Let's 
strange. It's probably my fault. I'm probably in a different library or something weird's happening with the sink. So the other thing is I just got the internet set up here. Um, and it took me a minute to get my lights all paired and everything else. So perhaps there's some other, some other issues going on here, but I'm not seeing, not seeing it. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but if you get a minute, definitely check out Adobe capture. Um, I love it today, of course, cause I'm live, I'm having issues, but I think it's just user error. It's not necessarily the app. So, uh, check it out when you guys get a chance. So it's Adobe capture. This is what it looks like. So um, if you've got your Creative Cloud account, you can sign in and do all kinds of cool things with, with Capture. You can create shapes, you can create patterns, you can do color themes, you can do materials for 3D wraps, some really, really cool stuff. So uh, back to this example, um, this is typically how I would make different color swatches for projects that I'm working on. And then uh, let's say I wanted to save these and work across the board in other apps. What I would do is I'd go to the library that I wanna work in, and let's just go ahead and start loading these colors in there. I'm in the library's window, which you can't see because my camera's in the way, so we'll hide that real quick. And I'm gonna come down here and click the little plus sign. I'm gonna click fill color. So now I have this color fill. And I just go through and I can click and add in all of these colors and you'll see they're adding uh, to the actual library. Boom. So now I've got them all added. And then if I jump into Photoshop, let's go ahead and make a new document here. Let's just do a new print. Letter sized. Ooh, you know what we could do? No, no, stay focused, Derek. All right, so we'll create that. And then I'll jump into libraries inside of Photoshop. Just thinking about it. And go find the library that we just added all these colors to. I'll go ahead and grab this libraries tab and I'll peel it off just so we can kind of see everything a little bit better. And you can see we have the colors that we just saved. So now working in Photoshop, I could do all kinds of cool things like, um, you know, maybe grab this color. Let's just go ahead and fill the background. That shortcut was option delete. Uh, let's go ahead and add another layer, grab this darker color, get a brush. Just the soft round brush. I'll make it pretty big. And I can start using these. I'm gonna turn the opacity down to maybe like 10. Let's make this brush even larger. I can start kind of burning in the edges here, which you probably can't even see very well because it's such a huge brush. Let's make it a little bit smaller here. And you start creating your own, basically a gradient or a vignette for something you're gonna make. And notice I'm working in layers. So on this right hand side, I can turn that on and off what we just did there. Maybe add another layer. Let's go grab a different brush, maybe a textured brush of some kind. Add some halftone pattern to it. Turn my opacity back up. Maybe grab a lighter brush, make a new layer, just so I have options. If I don't like it, I can delete it. That is not my favorite, but that's all right. We're gonna keep going, because what I can do is I can just change the blend mode. Let's go ahead and cycle through the blend mode real quick. Color burn looks pretty nice. Maybe bring the opacity down a tiny bit. Okay, so now I've got some good texture based off of that color swatch that we sampled. And then maybe we add some text to it. So let's uh, let's throw some text in here. Enhance. Yeah, 
So I'm using the keyboard shortcuts command, command shift and the right bracket, which is the period key or the command shift comma. And that makes the font size larger or smaller. And then command option and right arrow or left arrow tracks it out, the kerning. Okay, command, option, right arrow, left arrow. And on a PC, it's different, and I don't remember what it is, but I use those keyboard shortcuts for everything. Make it larger. Or command T, and then just scale it up. Sometimes that's easier too. Center it. And um, let's check a couple things real quick. So now we'll do, I don't know. I'm just kind of screwing around today. So uh, playing with colors, sampling colors. There's a lot more we can do. Let me just get a basic design going here. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh no, everything's jumping around on me. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I didn't pregame this at all. I just jumped live because I had a few minutes to go live. I just got my camera set up and everything for the new office space. I wanted to test it out. So, oh geez, I don't know why this is jumping around on me. All right, center it up. So now let's say we wanted to, I don't know what else to do with this. This needs more, but we'll, we'll keep going. All right, <clears throat> so let's say, let's say I wanted to change the colors on this. There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I'm fastest in Illustrator when I play around with this kind of stuff, but let's jump back over to, oh, this is a perfect example. Let's say you wanted to grab these colors. So um, sometimes depending on the website, you can just right click and copy the image. In this case, I can't because of the way it's been coded. So again, get that screenshot, which is command shift, the number four, okay? And then I take my hands off of it and you'll see that I've got the cursor started. Now I'll click and drag, okay? And then before I let go, hold down control, then let go of the mouse, still holding down control over here. And what that's gonna do is, like I said before, it's gonna save it to your clipboard. So now I can jump over here, command V to paste that image. Grab all of these guys, option, drag, Hit the letter R, let's rotate this. Let's sample some colors with the eyedropper tool. So maybe more colors here than we need. Maybe we'll break this one up. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna sample this color and paste it here. I'm gonna grab this color and double click in the color fill area. I'm just gonna go ahead and manually drag the color of this up a little bit. Click okay. So now I've got a good spread of colors here. This is a darker gray. I don't know if you can tell that or not. You probably can tell. I've got lights blinded me, so the colors look a little different. All right, so there's another color swatch idea. So let's go ahead and add these. Before I do, I'm gonna add a new folder. I'll call this pink colors for lack of a better creative name. And then um, add another one, we'll call this pink colors. Drag this guy out. And now I can drag these colors into here. So I got my green colors. Oh, wrong one, wrong one, there we go. 
Now I can add, let's just add this pink. Same way, add the fill color. Just get them all in there real quick. Could also call this plum. I don't know, we're making it up as we go. All right, so now I've got these not grouped colors. Can I shift click all of these? I can. And then I can click and drag the whole thing right up here into the pink colors thing. Do some simple organization here. Boom. All right, now I can jump back over into Photoshop and look at the library is already updated. So maybe I want to change all the colors on this. Just grab that text, click on the pink over here. Just grab this text, maybe click on the lighter pink. Let's go to our background layer. Let's make it this darker plum color. Option delete to fill that background color. Now, you'll notice this color is very, very, very difficult to tell. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these three layers, shift click all of them. No, nope, nope, just kidding. We're gonna go a different direction. So before I do anything on this layer, what I wanna do is click on this little lock icon. We've got these, these little lock icons. We're gonna click on the one that looks like a checkerboard. So by clicking on that, you'll see a little lock on my layer. And what that does is it locks just the transparent or the non-transparent pixels. So any part of the layer that has a pixel, you'll be able to edit. But if it's transparent, you can't touch it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and on this layer, which you can't see because my camera's in the way. All right, on this layer, it's locked. I'm gonna go ahead and let's try this bright pink color just so we can see what it does. Now, it's not gonna apply it yet. I need to go to edit, down to fill. I prefer option delete on my keyboard. With the foreground color, click okay. And now it fills just the part of the layer that actually has pixels. That way it doesn't just fill the whole thing. It's a great shortcut. I love using these, uh, the lock the transparent uh, thing. Let's, let's fill this layer with pink. Lock the transparency and fill that layer with pink. So now we quickly change the whole color of this mock-up or this design in Photoshop. All right, uh, let's see. What else was I gonna show you? Okay, so that's how I, I work with colors inside of Illustrator. Uh, we tried to use Capture, I, oh, it's right there. You guys, this whole time. Okay, so earlier in the stream, um, we started using my iPad here and we made this, this uh, gradient thing using Adobe Capture. And I don't know why I didn't see it before, but because it was a gradient, duh, down here in my library, the gradient's right there in front of me. Huh. Uh, I was looking for all the different colors pulled out, which is why I didn't see it. Perfect. All right, so if we go back and we go ahead and go back to colors, we've got the Stream Deck color swatch, we've got this gradient here. Let's go ahead and click the pencil tool to edit it. RGB, uh, yeah, we'll leave it RGB. Um, so if we go back to the original image, which was this picture of my desk, and we sampled the colors from these buttons. So what I wanna do, let's go back further. Let's add a new color. using the camera, do it again, tap to freeze. We'll drag these anchor points into the colors we want. Okay, and this time on the left-hand side, instead of using the gradient, oh, no, I'm gonna get rid of this too. There we go. All right. So right here on the side, sorry, I'm having a really hard time focusing with this music. <laughs> so um, on this side right here where the little button is, tap that and then change it from the gradient 
to the, I don't know what this version would be called, the color swatch version. So now we have all these different colors that we can just uh, import as colors instead of a gradient. I'll go ahead and click on the checkbox. I'll click save. Sure. And then we'll throw it into my library. Actually, I'm not gonna publish those. We'll click save. Oh, there we go. So now we've got the gradient and then we have the whole color swatch thing. So I should be able to close that now. And immediately when I switch to my screen, you can see that we've got the, the color theme right here as well. So how will we use the color theme? That's a great question. So depending on what you're doing, let's jump over into Illustrator real quick. We've got this color theme here as well. Should. Right here, I can right click and add to color swatches. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that it just added the one color there. Why did it do that? Let's go add theme to swatches. There we go. So now I've got all these colors in my color swatches from my library now in Illustrator. So now if I wanted to, let's work with these ones over here. Drag a copy down. So I can click on this guy and I can start applying these colors from what we sampled on the iPad. Need one more. Boom, there we go. All right, so, and then the last way I would work with color, I just showed you how I'd work with color within the computer. It's within Illustrator, or within Photoshop. We're using Adobe Capture. Um, I also use an app called SIP, S-I-P. And when it's running, you'll see it up here in your op or uh, in the bar across the top. Looks like this. And then I can click right here on this little target looking thing. And I can hover over any pixel on my entire screen from anywhere. And I can sample that color. Then it copies it to my clipboard and copies it in my library here on SIP. So if I wanted to build that out, Grab this, double click on the color, and it's gonna by default highlight your hex code. And now what I can do is I can actually go ahead and hit Command V to paste in the hex code. Click OK. And what it did, it kept this hex code on my on my clipboard. If I wanted to, I could come down here and click any of these others that I've already done. If I just click on it, it's gonna copy that hex code to my clipboard and come in here, double click on the color swatch, command V to paste, and click over here to see that color load before I click okay if I want to. And now I've got a different color. Let's try, let's try another one. Let's come back into SIP. Let's go grab this pomegranate color, which you can't see. Double click on it and it copies it to my clipboard. Come back into Illustrator. Double click on the foreground, paste it in there and click OK. So that's how I use SIP to get different colors from other places on my screen. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you're browsing, again, another image here and I don't even have to copy these if I didn't want to. I can scroll down and let's say, um, oh, I really like you know these colors from the Procreate app or from Photoshop, maybe this Photoshop blue. I could come up here to SIP and I don't even have to take a screenshot. I can just hover right over this, click on it, and it's gonna copy that blue. Double click on the color, paste in the hex code, click OK, and now that blue is right inside of my design file that I can work with. So that's pretty much most of what I wanted to show you guys today. I've gotta to go here pretty soon. Um, yeah, it was a quick stream tonight. I know it was basic. Uh, just getting my settings set for the new stream, getting things up and running. Really excited about it. Really excited to have more stuff uh, coming here in the very, very near future. So stay tuned and to be first to know what's happening, uh, you can subscribe to my stream on Behance and that helps support me and this stream. Uh, or you can also jump onto my website. If you go to DerekMitchell.com, uh, you can see 
uh, a lot of cool things here. I've got some courses, I've got uh, some different blog articles, some tutorials. If you guys want something that's a little more streamlined and straight to the point, uh, you can check this out also right here under join the newsletter. Give me your name and your email and I'll keep you up to date on new things there as well. So that's it for today, guys. It was pretty basic, pretty straightforward, but I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something new as far as how to work with colors and how to sample colors for your next project using Illustrator, Photoshop, and SIP. And that's it, guys. Have an awesome weekend, and I will catch you guys later. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information and I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I wanna remind you. The first is if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can, depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can. And uh, also maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your Facebook page. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, but again, just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and I'd love to continue going live as much as possible and helping you guys out. So the best way that I can help you is by you commenting on the videos below. I read those comments. I engage with them as soon as I can, if I can, when I see them. So if it's live, I'll try and answer you right away. If this is a replay, you can still comment on the video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say, thanks again for watching and let me know hey, what you're up, working Marche? on i'd love to help you I out see you and hopefully sorry we'll we missed you i'll catch you later live and to be sure you don't miss it like like this video and subscribe and follow and do the things all right guys thanks for watching we'll talk to you later